Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church to our digital service. We are so, so glad that you are joining us here. Wherever in the world you're joining us from, whether you're at home here in Fernandina Beach or whether you're in a different state or in another country of the world, it is good to gather together in this way and we are so thankful that we can gather in this way. As we get going today, there are a couple of things, as there always are, that are going to be helpful for all of us as we get going. So I would love to know that you have worshipped with us today and you can let us know that by signing our digital attendance pad. You will find that by going to our website, mumconline.com forward slash here, and you will be able to fill in the uh, digital attendance pad there. Please go ahead and do that. You can also, on that pad, fill out um, some prayer requests. So if you have needs in your own life that you would like us to be praying for, if there, or if there's a situation that you would like us to be praying alongside you in, please fill it out in there. We have people who meet every Tuesday morning. They will be glad to pray over those needs. I also want to draw your attention to the chat um, section of the screen. Please go ahead and say hello to one another in there. Extend the peace of Christ to one another. And again, share those prayer requests in there. We also filter those through to our team on Tuesday morning. And you have the benefit of knowing that someone will be praying for you in real time as you worship today if you share them in there. It is good to gather in all that we do here in this service today. It is our hope and our desire that you will know the closeness of God's presence with you and the invitation to be a part of what God is doing in the world. You know, one of the ways that we experience that closeness is by lighting a candle at the beginning of our service. And so if you have a, a candle somewhere in your house that you want to grab now, I invite you to bring that into this space. And today we are talking a little bit about Jonah. And so I'm reminded of Jonah's journey and how Jonah actually said no, and then begrudgingly said yes. And, and I think about the way that we sometimes say no and then yes, but that we always have a light and a beacon that we can follow that will guide us in the right direction. And so today we light this candle knowing that God and Christ is always with us. And so we say, welcome light of Christ, fill this space with love. And we also know that where Christ is, there peace is as well. And so I invite you to share signs of peace and say, peace be with you. And also with you. Hey Memorial, welcome to our mission highlight for this month. So our last mission project was to go out and pick citrus in, on, for, in Fernandina on the island. And we picked an amazing amount of citrus. We picked 1,011 pounds. And I couldn't believe it was 1,011 pounds at first because two years ago, when we picked the most that we've ever picked, we picked 1,011 pounds. But then we had a family come by and drop off just a little bit more. So I'm going to say that we did 1,015 pounds, which means that's the most we've ever done, which is awesome. So great job with our last hands-on missions project. Our next hands-on mission project is Rise Against Hunger. And I'm so excited because Rise Against Hunger makes a huge impact in global hunger. And it's an opportunity for you to pack... Keep going. <laughs> okay. It's an opportunity for you to pack meals for in our community to send out globally. Um, so this past Christmas Eve, we collected for Rise Against Hunger, we collected $3,300. That translates to 8,200 meals that will be given and packed. So I want to encourage you, if you're still wanting to give, you can still give to Rise Against Hunger. The dip jars are set to $20, and that equals 50 meals that you get to give. And then uh, if you want to give more than that, just make sure that you tag it for Rise Against Hunger. Hunger, and that'll be a great way for us to continue to give to Rise Against Hunger. And so our packing event will be February 3rd, and we want to make sure that you jump in on that. You can still sign up to help out with that. And Justin, you're talking about missions. Yes. So you know I'm a member of United Women in Faith, which was, of course, United Methodist Women, and that's all we do is talk about missions. In fact, we <laughs> love missions so much that we give a special mission recognition award every year. Well, this, in the December, we decided that Chris Bryan needed that award, so we, I went to her and visited her in the hospice and gave it to her, and her family was so excited. And we talked about it, and we said, this year, we could have given two. And so the other mission award goes to our buddy, <laughs> Justin Ramabi. Oh, wow. And um, we found out you weren't going to be here for our brunch next week, so we decided we'd sneak it in this way. 
It is given by the United Women in Faith for your faith, hope, and love in action. You live missions, Justin, and that is a huge thing to us women. So you get this, and you get this pretty gold pen, and we congratulate wow. you, but more importantly, we thank you, because what you do thank is you. what Memorial's all about. Wow. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. you affirm with me what we believe you'll find the words on the screen let's say them together we are not alone we live in God's world we believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus the word made flesh to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit we trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi, it's Pastor Rachel here. Miss Sarah is on vacation, and so I am here to welcome you into this child, this children's moment. And you know what I was thinking about? We tend to have a time in kids where we learn about Jonah. Do you remember who Jonah is? Jonah was a prophet, and he was a prophet that was the voice piece of God. That means that he heard what God was saying, and he was supposed to go and tell other people what God was saying. But Jonah found out from God that God wanted him to go to somewhere that he did not want to go. He did not want to go to this city of Nineveh because Nineveh to him was this big, scary place 
where people were not doing what God was telling them to do. And so you know what Jonah did? Jonah got on a boat and went all the way in the opposite direction from where he was supposed to go. And that's usually the story that we hear, right? So then what happens? Jonah's on the boat and there's this big storm that comes and all the people on the boat are really scared. And they realize that part of the reason that the storm is happening is because Jonah is on the boat and he is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And so he gets thrown overboard. And we hear that part of the story because then what happens? He gets swallowed by a big fish and that big fish then three days later spits him out when he says to God, God, I'm so sorry, I'll do what you told me to do. And so Jonah ends up on land, going back to Nineveh where he's supposed to be. And you know what? That's usually where the story ends for us in, in kids time. But today, Pastor Charlie's actually gonna talk about the next piece. And that is that Jonah then goes to Nineveh, this big city, and he goes to Nineveh and he goes to the king and he tells the king that the people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing and that God is not happy with them. And do you know what the people do? They change. They say, we need to listen to what God is saying and we need to change what we're doing. And I wonder sometimes if you are having a hard time listening, if you get another chance with your parents and you get the chance to change what you're doing. And what, how do your parents respond? If it's my son and he does what he's supposed to even after he hasn't listened, I'm very happy and I'm glad that he does that. And God was happy too. And God made sure that these people knew that they were being faithful. And so even when we have hard times, even if we have a hard time listening, we know that God gives us a chance to change our ways. And Jonah had a hard time with that. But what I want you to remember is that God is here to love us and to support us and to be with us always. And so we can do that by responding to God and listening to what God has to say for us because we know that God does it out of love. So will you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for loving us even when we have a hard time listening to what you say, even when we have a hard time following your directions. We know that you love us always. Amen. And now I want to turn this to the, the next part of our worship service where we get to see what three things we'll learn about this week. You'll often see the ladies from our women's circles here at Memorial participating in missions, preparing and serving meals at church, out in the community doing work. Now this Saturday, they're gonna be hosting their annual potluck breakfast and all of the women from our church family are invited. The United Women in Faith, formerly United Methodist Women, will be hosting their annual potluck breakfast this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in Maxwell Hall. Ladies, bring a dish to share and come enjoy some fellowship with other women and a program presented by our own Barbara Bruce on deepening prayer and learn more about what the United Women in Faith are up to this year. No need to RSVP, just come share a meal and share some good conversation with other women of our church. That's Saturday, January 27th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in Maxwell Hall. Now, Memorial is honored to be hosting the second part of the next Certified Lay Servant Training for our district. It's going to be here in February. There's going to be people from all over the Northeast District who want to deepen their relationship with service in the church. And you can be a part of that, too. If you feel called to do a little bit more in the church to deepen your relationship and support of the ministries here, then perhaps you're called to be a certified lay servant. You can start the training process or continue your training through the next round of two-part classes beginning this month. One's on Zoom and one is here at Memorial. The first set of classes over Zoom are Thursday, January 25th in the evening. The second set of classes are here at Memorial on Saturday, February 3rd. Now there are classes you can sign up for if you're new to the process or if you're continuing in the process of becoming a certified lay servant. Basic lay servant training is if you're just starting out or if you're in the process and ready for something more, sign up for accountable discipleship, 
aging and ministry in the 21st century, lay pastoral caregiving, or leading worship. This is a wonderful way to get more involved in serving the church through our local church and district. To sign up, follow the link at mumconline.com news, or if you have questions, see Pastor Charlie. Pastor Rachel has fit in so well here at Memorial that it's hard to believe she hasn't been here forever, but she has and she's still new. She wants to get to know everybody here at Memorial and she is here to invite you to coffee. Did you know that I've been here for five months now? I can't believe it. It's been a great time, but one of the things that I've learned while I was here is that it is just so busy. And the time to, to meet with people and to get to know everyone is really, really small. And so I'm carving out some time so that I can get to know you all better. From 9 to 11 on Tuesdays, I'm going to be at Amelia Island Coffee. And I want to grab coffee with you, even if it's for just 10 minutes or for an hour or four or five of you show up. Coffee's on me. I want to get to know you better so that I can really learn and hear the stories of Memorial. That's Coffee with Pastor Rachel each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Amelia Island Coffee, which is just a few blocks west of the church at 207 Center Street. Come chat with Rachel and she'll buy the coffee. Enjoying food and fellowship with the women's circles here at Memorial, working to more deeply serve the church by becoming a certified lay servant, and getting to know Pastor Rachel over some coffee, these are just three things that you can do to live your calling through Memorial. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Hear the word of God. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim the message I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly large city a three-day walk across. Jonah began to go to the city, doing a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are gathered together for worship and for prayer. So please center yourselves, get quiet, and let us go to the Lord together in prayer. Your people are gathered here today, Lord, as we enter into your holy presence, because you, Jesus, have made it possible for us to have no need for intercessors for walls, for curtains, or obstacles of any kind between you, O oh God, creator of all that is, was, or ever will be, and us, your children. We humble ourselves before you today, knowing that it is you and no other who has called us to this place for this time of worship. Just as you called Jonah and those first followers of Jesus, Lord, you call upon us to draw close to you, close to your heart, to receive what only you can give, life, redemption, forgiveness, and perfect peace. Your presence, Lord, with us is pure love. Thank you for so great a love. You give us an assurance of acceptance and love that cannot compare what, with what even the most wonderful of persons can give us. Only you are eternal and perfect, for only you are God. Only you are worthy of our adoration and worship. It is you and only you we trust to completely yield our hearts, minds, and spirits. And we confess, Lord, 
that we do not understand your ways. We are often confused and troubled by the perpetual injustice, cruelty, suffering, and deprivation you allow. We can only trust that you know what we cannot. Your tolerance for that which seems intolerable and at which we cry out, how long? Why, it's for reasons beyond our comprehension and our own capacity to withstand. And so we wait on you, God, trusting that one day all will be made plain to us, all fog will be lifted, all truths will be made known. Help us to hear you calling each of us by name to go, to do, or to be that which we resist, just as did Jonah. And like Jonah, when we see your Holy Spirit move, when we see the redemption of those for whom we can only feel contempt and judge, we find it hard to accept that your mercies, your kindness, your blessings, and your forgiveness are for all. We want to do as those first disciples did. We want to make you into our image. We want to make you into the Messiah we design. So help us to accept you are beyond the farthest reaches of our understanding. And so we ask you to help us accept the mystery of you. Help us to see that your ways are not our ways and that your sense of fairness eludes our human expectations. Instead, lead us deeper into unconditional trust that when our prayers are not answered as we want, you are still at work in ours and in the circumstances of those we love, those who are sick, hurting, lost, and the least. All are in your capable hands despite what we see. And so we pray, trusting you hear us in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today from the New Testament comes from the book of Mark, chapter one, one verses 14 through 20. Hear the word of God. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When you think of the very best teams that you have ever seen, who do you think of? And I'm not just talking about your favorite teams here, okay? I'm asking you to think about the very best teams to ever have been assembled. Now, if you're having trouble, let me help you out. Cast your minds back 32 years to 1992 when Barcelona hosted the games of the 25th Olympiad. Now, if your memory is good, you will remember that that was the year and those were the games at which the world was introduced to the United States basketball team, also known as the Dream Team. 
Never before had the world seen a team made up of all of the very best players who were performing at the very top level of their game. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Carl Malone, Scotty Pippen, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, John Stockton, and of course, Michael Jordan. This team was so full of talent that Magic Johnson actually said that he would look around on the court and he wouldn't even know who to pass to. Even a 14 year old boy like me in little old Northern Ireland on the other side of the Atlantic knew these names. They were household names, global stars. They were known to be the best. The Dream Team blew away all of their opposition at the Barcelona games. They averaged 117.3 points per game, beating every single team by double digit margins. And all but two of those teams by more than 40 points. In fact, it is said that the hardest opposition anyone on the Dream Team faced was actually during practice. Sports Illustrated described one scrimmage game before the Olympics as the greatest game nobody ever saw. What a team. Now fast forward from there approximately 10 years and stay with me in Spain, but this time we're going to hop from Barcelona to Madrid, where we can meet another one of the very best teams ever to be assembled. The 2003 Galacticos of Real Madrid were another team made up of superstars performing at the very heights of their career. Perhaps their names were not as well known here in the United States, but for the rest of us in the world, the names of Louis Figo, Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo, Raul, Roberto Carlos, Sergio Ramos, Iker Casilla, and one Mr. David Beckham were as well known as any of the members of the 1992 Dream Team. And those names in the soccer world when they were together, they struck fear into the players of every other team they played against. The 1992 USA Dream Team, the Real Madrid Galacticos of 2003 to 2005, both of them were great teams. That much is true. But honestly, I don't think any of them could come close to the real Dream Team that I get to work with every single day. Seriously though. Just think about it for a few seconds. If you were one who was responsible for pulling a team together and resources were not an issue and you had access to the very, very best people at the tops of their game, don't you think that it would be amazing to pull that kind of team together and see what kind of magic you could make happen with all of that brilliance making up just one team? It really would be brilliant. Apart from one thing, of course. You see, there would only be room for the very best of the best to share in that success. All of the rest of us would be closed out, would be excluded from participating. In many ways, the Bible is a God-inspired collection of stories telling us of how God pulls together God's team so that God's mission in the world might succeed. It's true. Right from the get-go in Genesis and all the way through to John's revelation, we encounter a God who is always inviting humans to get on board and to be a part of God's work in the world. Now, you could be forgiven for imagining that with God's access to resources, that is, access to absolutely everything and everyone in the world across the entire span of time, you would think that God would focus maybe only on recruiting the very best of the best, who are at the very tops of their game in terms of human performance. I think that if I was the one who was writing God's story, I'd be writing a story of how a dream team came together to do God's work in the world. God's Galacticos. It would be a great story. But I'm not the one writing it. 
God's story is written by God alone. And the evidence that we see in the scripture is that God's way of pulling God's team together is very different from what mine would be, maybe from what yours would be too. Because it appears that God's invitation to participate in God's mission in the world is actually an invitation that is extended to all human beings. Some of the best, maybe some of the worst too. Some of the fastest thinkers and maybe some who are slower to pick things up. Some of those who are eager and ready and itching to serve. Maybe some of those who are just reluctant to get on board. Today we have read a couple of call stories from Scripture. Those of Jonah in the Old Testament and then of Jesus' first disciples in Mark chapter 1. And in these stories we can see just how wide a net God casts in terms of inviting people to be part of what God is up to in the world. Let's take a look at the prophet Jonah at the beginning of his story, we see that Jonah is one who is not so eager to join in with God's work in the world. In the opening verses of the book, we read that the word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, go at once to Nineveh. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish, to flee from the presence of the Lord. Jonah didn't want to be any part of God's work. When invited to be a part of it, Jonah was filled with fear, and he definitely did not want to go anywhere near the city of Nineveh. Well, we know the next part of the story, right? Jonah goes on the run, jumps on a boat, gets caught in a storm, throws himself overboard to save the others on the boat, ends up in the belly of a big fish, recites a psalm, and all of this before the Lord speaks to the fish and then spews Jonah out upon the dry land. Ah, I love the Bible. It's not weird at all, right? <laughs> After all of that, in the portion of Jonah's story that we have read together today, we read that the word of the Lord came to Jonah for a second time. And there it is. Even with Jonah's reluctance, even with his rejection of God's call, even with his attempt at running away from the invitation that God was making to him, even with his sense of fear that he might not be able to do what God was asking him to do, even with all of that, said our reading today, the word of the Lord came to Jonah for a second time. Because God is writing God's story. And God is inviting everyone to be a part of it. Even those who are reluctant. Even those who are afraid about what joining in with God's work might mean for their lives. The year that I started out in seminary, there were only four of us in the class. Everything smaller outside of America. Dave and Fiona and myself, well, we were all at a rather similar age and stage of life. We were in our late 20s or our early 30s. We were married. We had young families. But George, well, he was at a very different stage. He was in his late 50s as he was starting out. And he had pretty much seen and done everything in life already. Now, when I first met George and heard a part of his story, I started to wonder to myself, why on earth is a guy at this stage of life putting himself through all of this now? But then I heard the rest of his story and I understood. You see, George had been called to ministry much earlier in his life, but like Jonah, George had decided to go on the run. The reason that George was starting out in seminary at his later stage of life was that God's invitation to him to join in was persistent and God wouldn't let up. God is calling all sorts of people at all sorts of stages of life to be part of God's team doing God's work in the world. In the Gospel reading from Mark chapter 1, we read of Jesus' call to Simon and Peter and to James and John. Of course, ultimately, they all proved themselves considerably less reluctant than Jonah had been. 
but we still have some things to learn from their stories. Things to learn about who God is inviting to be a part of God's team. You see, these are four ordinary working people just going about their everyday business. And in the middle of all of that, they receive this invitation to be part of God's team in a new way. Follow me, Jesus says, and I will make you fish for people. These four young men are not being invited into a process by which their skills and talents are going to be tested to see if they're fit for purpose. They don't actually have to jump through hoops in order to prepare themselves properly to be part of God's work in the world. No. All these fishermen have to do to be part of God's work is accept the invitation of Jesus to follow him. Everything else they will learn on the job. They will pick it up as they go. All they had to do was say yes to the invitation. These are ordinary people. They have ordinary skill sets. There is nothing, as far as we know, that would set these four people apart from their peers or from anyone else in their community. They are ordinary people going about their ordinary business and Jesus speaks to them and says, Hey, do you want to be part of God's team doing God's work in the world? God is inviting ordinary people like you and me to be a part of God's team. God is persistent in inviting those of us who are maybe a little reluctant to accept God's invitation. He's inviting them to be part of God's team. And yes, God's invitation extends beyond those who are on the inside to also include those we might perceive to be on the outside. Where do I see that? I'm so glad you asked. Let's jump back to Jonah for a second and remember where God was inviting Jonah to go. Nineveh. Nineveh was a city that would have been considered on the outside of God's story as we read it in the Bible. Jonah is being sent to Nineveh because of their wickedness. Their wickedness has come before God, it says. And God is being, and Jonah, sorry, is being sent with a warning. When he gets there, Jonah preaches the shortest, most direct sermon in the history of preaching. Forty days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Then as the rest of this short story plays out, we see the people of the city responding by getting their house in order. Their king does the same, even the animals of the city, all getting their house in order. And, as we read, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed God's mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Ultimately, the Ninevites were those on the outside who were invited to experience the mercy of God. What does all of this mean for you and for me? My friends, the invitation of God to be part of what God is doing in the world is truly an invitation that is extended to every single one of us. If you have been going to church all of your life and you have felt like you are on the outside, somehow not able to be a part of what you perceive as the inside, these lessons from the scripture today ought to begin erasing that kind of thought. If you have felt like you stand on the outside, it's time to hear for yourself the warm invitation of this gracious God to be part of what God is doing in the world. And it's also an invitation that is being extended to the world around us. God's sending of Jonah to Nineveh was ultimately the act that would bring the Ninevites in. Those who we perceive as being on the outside, 
dare I say it, those who we might perceive as being wicked and beyond the invitation of God, they just aren't. God is at work in the world. And God is inviting all people to be part of that work in the world. So I ask this question. How might we, at Memorial, extend that invitation to our neighbours and our friends, to our wider community in Fernandina Beach? Those who we might consider even to be on the outside. And friends, in these 28 days of dynamite prayer that, that we're moving through, we are reading together an invitation coming to us from God to open up our lives and our hearts so that this very power of God that we're reading of might be at work within us and through us. There are no markers of the faith that we must meet in order for that to happen. We only need open ourselves and our hearts to the reality of God's work in the world and to God's desire for us to be right in the middle of that work. We've got to open ourselves to the fact that God's Spirit can be and wants to be at work in us and through us. And so I hope you're joining in in this prayer journey because it really is eye-opening and heart-opening to the fact that this inviting God is at work in the world, that God is inviting all people to be a part of God's work, and that includes you and me all day, every day. So if you've felt like you can't be a part of it for whatever reason, if you have felt like you are on the outside, it's time to blow that thinking apart. It's time to realize that God loves you so much that God is inviting you to be a part of God's team. And if you have thought that there are people out there in our community who can't be a part of what God is doing in the world, you know what, friends? God sent Jonah to the Ninevites. It's time for us to blow apart that thinking, to extend this warm invitation of God to all of those who will hear it. That's what we read in the call stories of Jonah, and Simon, and Peter, and James, and John. That's what we experience in the call story that God is writing in our own lives too. God's team is made up of all kinds of people, from all kinds of backgrounds, from all kinds of cultures, at all stages of life. I want to be a part of that team. I suspect that you do too. And I'm here today to tell you that there's nothing to stop you doing that. Open up your heart today. Accept the invitation of Jesus to follow him. And let's all be a part of what God is doing in this world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of every one of our digital services, we always have on screen just a few questions to help you think through what we've been saying in the last few minutes. So here are this week's questions. Friends, that brings us to the end of our digital worship service. Again, we are so glad that you joined us here today. And we hope that you heard the invitation of God that's being spoken to your life wherever you are in the world right now. An invitation to be part of God's team. I want to extend an invitation to you to join us again next week for worship. You can do that right here with our digital service. It'll go out at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning on YouTube, uh, as it always does. It's also available anytime thereafter, forevermore. You can come back to watch that service. Also, if you're in Fernandina Beach and you're able to join us in person, we would love nothing more than to welcome you into one of our worship spaces in one of our three on-campus worship services. 
You can join us at 8 a.m. in the sanctuary for a hymn sing and a celebration of Holy Communion. You can join us here in Maxwell Hall for our contemporary worship service, or you can join us at 11 a.m. for our traditional worship service back in the sanctuary. In all of those spaces, in all of those services, in person and digital, we know that God meets with us and warmly invites us to be part of what God is doing. So let's gather again next week. In the meantime, would you receive this benediction? Beloved children of God, go in peace today as those who have been warmly invited by God to be part of God's team, doing God's work in the world. May we go today in the strength and grace and power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.